53rd chapter of Isaiah. Read with me. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and yet he was not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before the shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Thank you. 
love to hear uh, this. I, I love to hear this chapel being filled with music like that, with lyrics like that. So we celebrate the goodness of God to us in Jesus. Uh, one of the songs that the choir is going to sing near the end of tonight's service is called a Celtic Kyrie. So Celtic, uh, imagine you know, uh, as you might guess, it in this case it refers to a particular musical style that comes from a particular place in the United Kingdom. When we sing it, you're going to hear the little lilt in the music. But what is Kyrie? Well, the word Kyrie comes from the Greek word that means Lord. And in this particular piece of music, you're going to hear several times over the phrase Kyrie eleison, and also Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. And as you might guess, Christe eleison means Christ have mercy. So the lyrics of the song begin like this. They came to Jesus, those who were needy, weakened of body, weary of soul. They cried to Jesus, Lord, have mercy. In his compassion, he touched their lives. In his compassion, he made them whole. Now, when you hear those words, they should turn your mind to the gospel accounts and to Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular. Because in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, many needy people come to Jesus and do you know do you know what the most prominent the most common request of such people is in those three gospels when they come to him needy like this it is exactly this lord have mercy over and over again needy people come to Jesus they cry out to him lord have mercy on me so, for instance, in Matthew chapter 9, two blind men are following Jesus, and they cry out, Have mercy on us, son of David. In Matthew 15, a Canaanite woman whose daughter is oppressed by a demon comes to him shouting, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. In Mark 10, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, is sitting along the road to Jericho as uh, Jesus passes by, and he calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In Luke, Luke chapter 17, ten lepers lift up their voices and they say, Jesus, Master, Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us. Over and over and over again in the Gospels, we find scenes like these. We hear desperate pleas like these to Jesus, people who are coming deeply hurting and broken. You know, usually they have some sort of physical ailment. Sometimes it's demonic oppression. But there's one case that stands out to me, at least. This one's a little bit different. It stands out to me among all the others because it involves something that is deeper, deeper than just a physical ailment. It involves a deep, dark disease of the soul. This one is actually found, maybe you can guess, it's found in a parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 18. You probably know it. It's short, and it goes like this. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like that other man. Thank you that I'm not like other sinners, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this dirty tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of everything that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, <clears throat> would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast 
saying, listen, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus, Jesus says of this wretched tax collector, this lying, cheating tax collector, that he went away justified. And he also says that the Pharisee did not. The prim, proper, and highly religious Pharisee. How in the world does that make sense? How does that make sense? But listen, the whole reason that we are here tonight doing what we're doing, remembering the death of Jesus and putting it on display all over again in our songs and in our scripture readings, the whole reason that we are doing that is to remind ourselves of and to celebrate the answer to that question, how does that make sense? Because the answer to that question of how it makes sense that the sinful tax collector went away justified and that the religious Pharisee did not is because Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died for sinners. And when sinners cry to God for mercy, as that tax collector did, he hears their cry and he grants them mercy. Jesus, in his death, is God's mercy. The Pharisee failed to see his need and he went away not justified. But the tax collector saw who he was. He did see his need and he did cry out and God granted him mercy and the mercy that he granted came in the form of a crucified Jesus. A Jesus who dies in the place of sinners. And that's why we, sinners, every one of us, everyone here, a sinner, that's why we are here tonight remembering Jesus in his death. If you have never acknowledged your sin and cried out to God for mercy, don't wait. Do it tonight. And he will cleanse your soul. God will cleanse your soul with the powerful, precious blood of Jesus. A little later on tonight, our final hymn is uh, going to be this. And I hope that when we come to it, you can sing it with all your heart. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are, my glorious dress. And flaming world, worlds in these arrayed with joy, may I lift up my head. Praise be to God that he is so merciful to send us his son to be crucified in our place. Praise God for his mercy.
next reading was too long to be printed in the order of service. So just listen as I read from Mark chapter 15. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what he should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. When the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. reading from Romans 5. 
Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so the death spread to all men, because all sin, for his sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted when there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many die through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Please stand again as we sing number 468.
in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, there are um, a few very important words missing from your pages. So I'm going to ask you to let me read the very beginning, then when I put out my hands, you join. <laughs> Revelation 5, verse 6. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on earth. And I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Our final hymn tonight is also our closing prayer. It's addressed, you'll see it as you look at the words, it's addressed to our Lord Jesus, number 520 in the Trinity hymnal. Let's stand together and sing it. We'll sing it as a prayer with joy and with wonder. Number 520, Jesus, thy blood and righteousness.
Yeah. Mm -hmm.